Hey everyone, if you're new to the class, welcome to the channel for Calculus BC. If you're returning from a previous math class, welcome back. It's been a long time since we've encountered each other, but uh, we are hoping to get this show on the road with some preparation for the AP Calculus exam for Calculus BC. Uh, Calculus BC is the continuation of your AB class. Uh, hopefully you all did well and have retained enough information to move forward to the next level. Uh, there are some things that we assume that you remember from Calculus AB, but if you don't, that's what some of these videos are going to be for. And then we will begin our 12-week adventure into the final part of your calculus journey in high school. And so uh, to get things off the ground, why don't we go ahead and start with some derivatives review. Uh, derivatives are basically a means to find the slope of a tangent line. Uh, on a function, anywhere on the function, so long as the function is continuous and differentiable. So we are uh, knee deep in understanding rates of change of functions, uh, and that was all covered in Calculus AB. And I'm hoping that a lot of those things are still retained, but uh, before we get into specific examples, why don't we go ahead and review all of the rules that we need to know, that we need to be familiar with when it comes to taking uh, the derivative of a given function. So let's start off with something easy. So let's start off with the power rule. Uh, we know the power rule hopefully pretty well. This is the one that uh, you know comes back pretty quickly. If I have a function y equals x to the n, and I'll probably switch off between notations, that way you guys are used to the calculus notation, uh, all the different ways to write a derivative. Uh, if I do dy over dx, right, the derivative of x to the n, so long as n is a constant, I'm going to end up with n times x to the n minus 1. The next example is going to be product rule. Whoops, uh, the program. Product rule. The product rule occurs when you have two functions that are being multiplied together. So if you have, um, let's say we have y equals, uh, let's see, f of x times g of x. Let's see, I'll go ahead and use y prime this time instead of uh, instead of dy over dx. Uh, this one's going to be f of x, whoops, times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. So uh, the way I often say this is first unchanged times the derivative of the second plus second unchanged times the derivative of the first. I don't know why that has kind of a rhythm that I tend to follow pretty well. Uh, so that's how I tend to remember product rule. Uh, quotient rule. Unimaginatively, you would assume that quotient rule happens when you are having two functions that are being divided by each other. Most of the time, right, of course, sometimes we can do a little bit of algebra, some, a little bit of manipulation to avert quotient rule, but let's assume we can't. This time, y equals f of x divided by g of x. Well, then we'll do y prime again. y prime is going to be equal to the low thing unchanged times the derivative of the top minus the high thing unchanged times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by the bottom function, non-derived, but squared. So sometimes you might hear that rhyme, the low d high minus high d low square to the bottom, and away we go. That's kind of the way quotient rule kind of goes. Uh, chain rule. Chain rule. Chain rule is if you have y equaling f of g of x, so a function inside of another function. Sometimes you might see it written as y equals f circle, open circle, g of x. If I was to derive this, I would say then that dy over dx would be f prime, right, the derivative of the outer function with the inside unchanged times the derivative of the inner function, so g prime of x. And of course, the more layers in there are, the more chains would come out. These are your four basic rules when it comes to uh, when it comes to derivatives. Of course, there's derivatives of trig functions, derivatives of logarithms, implicit differentiation. All those things will come up as we um, as we explore this derivatives review. Uh, of course, you know the the uh, derivatives of trig. We will assume that to be to be uh, to be obtained knowledge at this point. Um, the notion of implicit differentiation really just stems from chain rule. We will do an example of it in this video. That way you can all see how that's done. Uh, derivatives of logarithms, that will show up. I'll have an example loaded up for you guys 
Uh, so these are the four basic tenets of derivatives that you guys need to know uh, in order to be successful in in order to begin being successful at calculus BC. So let's go ahead and take a look at how some of these are used. We, you know, we'll hit some of them, um, and we'll try to hit all of them, uh, but it won't be all of them individually. Sometimes they'll just show up in the middle of an, in, in the middle of a different problem. So uh, to, to wrap things up in this part of the video, this one is a simple review of derivatives. We're not doing any derivative applications. That's going to be a separate video. So we'll just do some basic coming out of the gate, pretty easy, and uh, we will uh, we will just do some do some deriving. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, I'm going to pull these questions from our prep book. And so the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do number 19. Pretty basic problem here. It says y equals cos squared of 3x. And they're asking me for what dy over dx equals. I don't know what that is. Well, whenever I see a cos squared 3x like this, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it so that it's cos 3x squared, all squared like that. The reason why I'm doing that is because this gives me a better intuition as to how many layers I'm dealing with because clearly we're dealing with chain rule here. There are functions with inside functions. In this case, I see three layers happening, the two being the outermost layer. If this was the movie Inception, you would see this as the car falling off of the bridge, that layer of the dream. The middle function is uh, is the cosine, right? In the movie Inception, the cosine would be equivalent to the hotel room with the elevator. And then the innermost layer would be the 3x, right? So that'd be the third layer down, and that would be the snowmobile fight from Inception. But if you haven't seen that movie, don't worry about the reference. You just have to remember that the, you just have to be able to acknowledge that two is the outermost layer, cosine's the middle layer, three is the innermost layer, and we're gonna derive this thing using chain rule. So how do I do this? Well, when I go to derive, I'm going to do d over dx to both sides, and I'll, I'll have to, I don't have enough space, I'll just throw the, the d over dx here, but I really mean for it to go over there. Um, and so from here, I'm going to get dy over dx, and that's going to equal, well, the outermost layer comes down first via power rule, right? So here comes our review of power rule. It's going to be 2 and then cos of 3x, right? So the inside piece stays unchanged. And then I'm going to derive the next layer in. So the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine of 3x. And then from here, I derive the innermost layer, 3. Now, if this was a free response question, this would probably be as far as I'd want you to go. However, if I wanted to simplify this thing, I would multiply the 2 and the 3 to get 6. That would be negative, And it would be cos 3x sine 3x. And I believe that is as far as I would expect you guys to go with that problem there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and keep this show going here. All right. Let's jump ahead to number 31 here. It gives me a function here. It says if tan of xy is equal to x, they want me to find dy over dx. Well, this one here is pretty clearly going to involve a few different trig rules, uh, a, diff a few different derivative rules, sorry, including derivatives of trig. And so I'm looking at the derivative of tangent. Of course, that's going to derive. But the inside, there's an x times a y. So what I'm thinking in my head right now is there's going to be product rule involved. And because this y is buried deep in the function, and I suppose there are ways to remove it, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Because there's a y buried into the function, I'm seeing product rule as well as implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation being caused by the fact that the y is being buried inside. So let's just go and derive this thing head on. So if I take the derivative of tangent x, well, that's secant squared xy. Of course, with chain rule, the inside stays unchanged. And now I'm going to go and derive the inner layer, which is the xy. And that is going to be where product and implicit differentiation make their appearance. So product rule again. First unchanged, when I do the derivative of the second, that's going to be dy over dx, right? I derive y with respect to x. In other words, I'm deriving y with x being the input. We actually saw it happen up here, in case you guys don't remember implicit differentiation. d over dx of y gave me the dy dx right here, and that's why this dy dx happens. Plus second unchanged times the derivative of the first, the derivative of x is simply 1. And that's going to equal 1, right, the derivative of x. 
At this point in time, getting the dy over dx by itself is going to be the mission. I will go and derive, uh, divide secant squared xy on either side. So I got x dy over dx plus 1 equals. Now, if you look at secant squared, uh, 1 over secant squared xy, I can probably simplify them out a little bit if I wanted to. Secant squared on bottom is the same thing as cosine squared up top. So I'll go ahead and I'll opt to do that, especially because this prep book has a bunch of multiple choice questions. So you want to make sure that you're leaning your answer more towards the multiple choice just to get that extra practice in, you know, because of course the AP exam definitely requires, definitely requires some multiple choice dexterity here. So you want to be leaning yourself towards the answer whenever possible. So uh, here we go cos squared xy minus y all over x, and I believe that is one of the choices uh, in the multiple choice section. So there you have it. There's number 31. So with number 32, we will go ahead and go. They're giving me y equals sine of x raised to the x power, and they want me to find the derivative. They want what dy dx is going to be. Well, when I see this situation happening, I see a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent. That should automatically trigger a reflex in me to do what's called logarithmic differentiation. What I mean by that is we are going to take the natural log of both sides. So what I have is the natural log of y equals the natural log of sine x raised to the x power. That's an n, I apologize. The reason why this move is important is because back in integrate three, you learned that when you have a natural log or a log of anything, uh, of, of something that's being raised to an exponent, that exponent can come down using logarithm rules. Remember, we're not doing any calculus right now. It's just gonna be ln of y equals x times ln of sine x. And now that all of the variables are on the base level, now I'm gonna go ahead and, in, and initiate my derivative. So this is going to be one over y, do not forget, implicit differentiation. We just did it in the last problem. Now where the mistake can easily happen here is you've done a lot of math and you're going to forget that this derivative here, while looking simple, actually does require product rule and chain rule. Product rule for the multiplication, chain rule for the sign being inside of natural log. So I see first unchanged times the derivative of the second, but there's a chain rule involved, which would be the derivative of sine, plus second unchanged times the derivative of the first. So let's go ahead and simplify that out a little bit. I'm going to move the, move the deal up here because I'm running out of space. I have no more scrolling space. So I'm going to say 1 over y dy over dx equals cosine over sine. I can call him cotangent. Again, the reason why I'm simplifying this so heavily is because this is a multiple choice booklet. So I want to make sure that my answer does show up at some point. Uh, that way I'm, I can confirm that I'm doing it right. Just like always in implicit differentiation, I get the dy dx isolated and I end up with uh, x cotangent x plus the natural log of sine x times y. But we know that y was this equation from the beginning. It was this function right here. So I'm going to go and replace the y with sine of x over x, and then everything else comes along for the ride. So x cotangent x plus the natural log of sine x. And that is your formula for the slope of this function, or rather of this function, anywhere on that function. Hopefully I'm not losing you. I'll be back in a flash with some more problems after I delete the board. Looking at number 68, it says an equation of a tangent line to the graph of f of x equals x parentheses 1 minus 2x cubed. And they want that at the point 1 comma negative 1. So in the last three examples, we only found the derivative. We only found the general formula to find the slope anywhere on that function. This time, they're asking us to find a specific derivative at a specific point in time. And not only that, they're asking us to write the equation of the tangent line when we find it, when we find that slope. So how do I go about doing this? My basic rhythm on a problem like this is when they give me the points, 
I will go ahead and write what I call the shell of the equation. So it's y plus 1, and it's y plus 1 because it's y minus negative 1. If you, if you don't know right now, I am initiating point slope form of a line. And what I'm missing right now is I'm missing a slope. And so how do I find slope? I take the derivative. Now before I take the derivative, I know what you're thinking. Totally product rule here, absolutely, because two functions being multiplied. But one of the hidden rules of calculus is that a little bit of algebraic manipulation goes a long way. And so now I can do this and avert product rule altogether. So now it's just power rule. So f prime of x will be 1 minus 8x to the 7th. And that is my formula to find slope anywhere. But I don't want the slope anywhere. I want the slope at 1. Notice how I'm not going to plug in the negative one because there's no corresponding y coordinate. This would have come into play if we were dealing with implicit differentiation, but we're not. So I'll just plug in my 1. So that's 1 minus 8, so I'm getting negative 7. So negative 7 is my slope. Now, every single answer in the multiple choice gives it to you in uh, slope-intercept form. On a quiz, this would be absolutely acceptable. On an FRQ, on the AP exam, this would be absolutely acceptable, but we're going to go a little bit further. We're dealing with some multiple choice here. So negative 7x plus 7 equals y plus 1. Subtract 1 from either side. y equals negative 7x plus 6. And that is your equation of your tangent line on this dude at those coordinates. And I think that will wrap it up for this episode. In this, in this episode, we covered all of the rules, what they are. We covered most of them. I don't believe quotient rule uh, made it on the cut on this one. But as we go through derivative apps in the next episode, uh, very likely a quotient rule will show up. Uh, we, graphed, we wrote the equation of a tangent line by finding a derivative and actually plugging in a specific point. So hopefully this kind of gets the calculus the calculus uh, back in the brain a little bit, just enough so we can, you know, uh, get some motion going and, uh, and, and re reconnect with our former calculus selves. So uh, as always, please leave comments or questions in the comments area. I will see you all in the next episode. Welcome back to the second half of your journey in Calculus BC. I'm looking forward to a lot of fun times, a lot of fun memories, and a lot of good results, and the expansion of your knowledge. See you later.